If you hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Ink Dependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is an ink from Papier Plume. Comes in a plain brown box. I wrote this on here. It's always a little tough writing on the side of a box. So there's nothing to, like, put your fingers on. But uh, this is called Café Diabolique. And I asked them for some more information about this ink and sort of, you know, the, the inspiration because this is part of the New Orleans collection and is not a limited edition. It is now a permanent part of the line or will be on November 5th when this becomes available on their site at Papier Plume, uh, papierplume.com, right there. All right, so this is Café Diabolique, and I said, hey, what even is this color? Because this color uh, is is an odd one, and it's not, uh, this is uh, a drink that I, I've never heard of before, but they said uh, it is based off of a traditional after-dinner coffee drink called Café Brûlot Diabolique, mostly referred to as Café Brûlot that is served at old restaurants in New Orleans, such as Antoine's and Arno's and others. It was, according to my uh, my YouTubing and my uh, searching around on places like NewOrleans.com, it was uh, invented at Antoine's restaurant in the late 1880s by Jules uh, Alciatore, the son of the restaurant's founder, which is, uh, you know, pretty cool. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about what this thing is here as we go. I put the recipe and that sort of thing in the review because it was very interesting. I started watching YouTube videos about it, which I will link to in the description here is what the color is. This is an uncharacteristically uh, saturated uh, ink for Papier Plume. They generally tend to be a little bit on the undersaturated side. Uh, I I like a good saturated ink, and this one is this is pretty cool. And also, this label is cool. They really stepped up their label game in the last few editions. I will tell you, this is uh, in there the New Orleans New Orleans collection. We have a cafe. Uh, we have a cafe. A little coffee there. It's on fire because of this Diabolique. So, really cool. So, check that out. Very nice. All right, let's see what this ink looks like. And here is our review page. This is our Rhodia 80 grams per square meter paper that I always use for these reviews, which is a uh, uh, really nice uh, coated paper for this kind of thing. You can see that it um, has some shading in here. Not a huge amount, but some shading, sort of mild. Uh, I was using it in this pen, which is a Pilot Custom 74. It has a medium nib. I was using the smaller converter, but I've used <laughs> used up most of that converter just with my writing over this, with this over the last few days, because I, I really do like this ink, I think. This is a medium nib. It's a fairly wet medium nib, and uh, of course I had no problems with the flow here. Uh, and I, I think it's uh, pretty medium flow, maybe a little bit on the, on the, on the wet side, so a little hard to say, but uh, pretty good flow here. Performance, there was some feather and bleed on the 20 pound paper, not a huge amount of either, but some, you can see uh, a little bit there on the Diabolique, a little bit on the staples, just here and there, no big deal. A little bit of bleed on the back of the page, but also very little for this terrible, terrible 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper. Uh, which is the worst stuff you'll find in your office. So pretty darn good performance, I think. Uh, and then we've got uh, here the <laughs> the way you make a Café Brûlot Diabolique, which is two sticks of cinnamon, eight whole cloves, the peel of a lemon, or as I saw in the YouTube video, uh, they use the peel of a whole orange, which is kind of fun. You get the, you like poke the cloves through it and all. This recipe didn't call for it. Uh, the peel of one lemon, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, three ounces of brandy, and three cups of strong black coffee. So you put the cinnamon, cloves, lemon peel, sugar, and brandy in a fireproof bowl. Very important as uh, as the, uh, I think his name is Greg for, from How to Drink on YouTube, says uh, this is a house ruiner because you get a lot of fire. <laughs> so put in a flame-proof bowl, put it on an open flame when the brandy is hot but not boiling. Bring the bowl to the table and ignite with a match. Use a ladle to stir and pour the liquid around or and pour the liquid around for two minutes. Pour the hot coffee into the flaming brandy and ladle the mixture into Dimitas cups, uh, which is, that's, a, this is, this is impressive to watch. So check that out on YouTube. I like, I said, link in the description, not a sponsor. Just, I thought that video was cool. All right. So these will be uh, going for 10 bucks uh, for a one ounce bottle. Uh, at Papier Plume. We'll do our little water drop test here. We'll look at it on some other papers and we'll look at some inks that are a little bit similar. So let's get our, um, let's get our water drop test here. And by drop, I mean, it's just like a whole bunch of water. I yet again recently dropped coffee all over some of my work. So this is a more and more relevant test for me as I get clumsier and clumsier. <laughs> all right, 
There we go. You see some of it swirling away. Not too much. Seems like it's doing okay in terms of water resistance. You never know what to expect with these inks. And uh, yeah, actually, it looks pretty good. I think if I poured coffee on this, I'd be able to see what I was doing. Yeah, there's plenty left behind. This is good. All right, let me just finish mopping that up. It's a different paper towel. And it absorbs differently than my usual ones. All right, supply chains. So there you go. Uh, a lot left over, actually. It's not too bad at all. Here's the chromatography for this ink, which I think is really interesting. I did the chromatography right off because I was like, what color even is this ink? It is a really dark brown that has got a little bit of a red tinge. And you can see that red tinge comes from the purple and this like this band of this band of like magenta up near the top. But plenty of it sticking around just as it did in our water drop test thusly. So not super surprising there. Okay, let's look at it on some other papers before we get to our ink comparisons. We have here our Tomoe River Ink Journal. Right, y'all? Huh? And there is the ink here. You can see that it is a brown on Tomoe River. You get a little bit more shading than you do on some other papers. You can see some shading pulled here from the F's and the top of the C's and the top of the D's as I make the strokes. Uh, but it's a very dark ink, and I think you could get, could get away with using this pretty much anywhere, honestly, uh, just because of how dark it is. Then on our wheat straw paper, which is a Inky Fingers notebook, uh, here we are, right there. And it looks like a very, very dark brown here as well. In the actual writing, it looks like it's more of a black on this paper. But here, when you get the scribble, some of the brown character comes out. And a little bit of the red, you can see a little bit of red in there as well. So really cool ink, definitely in my wheelhouse as far as ink colors go. And then I've been doing some transcription in my Marmon Crokey notebook, uh, notepad, I don't know, either way. And so I did a little bit here, uh, just kind of uh, getting into Hypatia's story. Uh, Hypatia's vicious murder sent shockwaves to Alexandria, not only due to its violent manner, but also because up until this point, philosophers were considered untouchable figures in city life. Um, so what was this vicious murder? Oof. That was a few pages ago, but uh, a mob stripped her naked, tore her body to pieces which, with what is either uh, sh oyster shells or roof tiles and dragged her limbs through town before setting the remains on fire. She really, like people were really angry at her for, <laughs> I guess, doing philosophy. Woo! It's, uh, it's Halloween time, right? <laughs> Yikes. But on this paper, you can definitely see the brown and uh, it's great. I think it looks really good on here. Feels nice on the page and on the nib. Flow is good. No, like we are weird hard starts or anything. You can see where my hand was. You can actually see a little bit of like that's definitely like a hand oil, uh, like alteration there. Yeah, so you know, put something under your hand <laughs> when you're writing. All right, uh, so let's look at some comparable inks here. Here is Papier Plume's Cafe Diabolique on a uh, uh, Colo Dex card. And on this paper, the scribbles in the corners give you that dark brown character, a little bit of the red perhaps, and then this interesting uh, color you get from the smear, you can see some of the, some of the white of the card poking through where it didn't uh, soak in, but really, uh, really an interesting color. A little bit of that purple action going on up here. Cool. All right. Uh, here it is next to Birmingham Pin Company's Burnt Walnut, which I have just gotten, but they're both burnt and they're in the same vein, although Burnt Walnut does look significantly lighter. It's, uh, I don't know, probably uh, half as dark, I would say, as Cafe Diabolique. Then I have Three Oysters Gogang, Gogung, rather, which I don't think I've actually gotten a chance to use, but it seems like it is pretty similar. Uh, I will say I think I like this one a little bit more. Three Oysters tends to be a little bit dry for me, uh, but the color is, is fairly close. Then I have here Kala's Gemstone Hematite, which I haven't gotten a chance to use either. I have a whole bunch of these Kala Gemstones, and I haven't gotten to all of them, but Hematite is a little bit close. This sample is from Shigura, uh, and uh, this is a pigmented ink, so it's going to behave a bit differently, but a little bit lighter, a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more of... of of a purple cast to it perhaps in the hematite. Then another Kala that is fairly close is Onyx. Onyx is a little bit close, although it has like a bit of a, a bit of a sheen almost on the Onyx that uh, Diabolique does not have. Sailor Doyu is one of my favorites. I love this ink. It is a great dark mysterious brown and pretty darn close to Diabolique, although a bit more on the yellow side, this brown. Browns are such a great color space. I love the variation. 
Then you have Cult Pen's Deep Dark Brown here, which is definitely more on the yellow side and a little bit lighter. I got this from my friend Eleanor. Looking forward to seeing her again uh, when we get back to pen shows. And then Colorverse Leica, which is kind of in the same vein as this one, although definitely, again, uh, a, a more yellow and a lighter version of brown. So there we go. Uh, that has been Cafe Diabolique from Papier Plume. If you go to New Orleans, um, order yourself a Cafe Brulot Diabolique and uh, go to YouTube and see it on fire. It's uh, it's dope. Also, find this at papierplume.com. Thanks very much to Papier Plume for sending this out for review. I have enjoyed it. It's going to be an ink that, um, that I, I use a lot, I think. I, this is a good color space for me. All right. I will see you all in the next review. Happy Fountain Pen Day. Peace out.